several um, readers were interested to know where, about the relationship between your art and therapy. Um, Sharon Walker said, uh, is it a form of therapy for you? Edie in Berlin said, how has being married to a psychotherapist influenced your work? And are there parallels between practicing art and practicing therapy? Um, I mean, therapy has been a huge influence. And yes, being married to a therapist has been amazingly influential because we talk all the time about therapy issues. And I, I think it's a very clear eyed way of looking at the world. And I'm interested in the clarity, the sort of truth seeking element of it. I think that's for me is, is the, the most useful thing in art because a lot of artists think that um, therapy will kind of wash away their talent almost if they yeah. had it. You know, their quirks are their, are their talent. And I would say, no, um, you know, it's like someone clearing up your tool shed. Um, and but if my art as is my art therapy, yes. If I look back at my work before pre-therapy, there were lots of elements. There was I was leaking madly about my issues, you know. And now I kind of do it with awareness. And then and I and, and I look at the work around the time I was having therapy with a lot of interest because it, 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 it was a kind of it was a kind of flowering in my work. I really sort of got my, got into top gear at that point because I kind of I found the. I found the revelations that came about myself and about the world from therapy uh, very, very exciting. Am I right that it was towards the end of your, I think it was six years in therapy, yeah. that you won the Turner Prize? Yeah. Do you think that's a co complete coincidence? Yeah, if you, if you do therapy, you'll win the Turner Prize. <laughs> 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 there have been, again, you won't be surprised to hear lots of questions about your bear, Alan Measles. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. um, and you've often said that you think that cuddly toys can almost um, be thought of as like a god. I think yeah. you said, I'm trying to get Alan to become a god. I've always thought there were a lot of similarities between gods and cuddly toys. We tend to project all our good feelings onto them. Yeah. Mr. Architect has a question, and it goes like this. He says, my seven-year-old daughter asked me last week, which one do you prefer, Grace and Perry or Alan Measles? Uh. <laughs> he said, I say Grace and Perry and argue that as the creator of Alan, the, argue, the choice was obvious. As soon as I said it, I realised it actually didn't make much sense. <laughs> 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 because, of, for example, I prefer Tintin to Elge. So, she replied, my daughter that is, that she, re she preferred Alan Measles. So, Mr. Architect's question is, who is right and which one do you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, you know, I mean, it, it depends who I'm, if, if, if I'm going to play the game, of course, Alan is, you know, a, a deity and he's my guru and everything and uh, everything, I owe everything to him because he's sort of, he's kind of led me out of the kind of, uh, the kind of war zone of my past into the kind of uh, the sunlit uplands of revelation of my present, you know, so therefore, <laughs> therefore I would say that he is the senior f partner in the, in the thing, but of course, you know, I'm afraid to say that he is, to, I projected everything onto him. So everything he is, I'm sorry, Alan, he's not present, so he won't hear this. <laughs> he is, you know, everything, he owes everything to me. I have, I have invented him. Like most gods, <laughs> like, I hate to tell this to many people, but most gods were invented by someone. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that I'm in the present. I mean, you know, the gods are the, 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 the famous gods. You know, the, the person who invented them is a long time ago, so we've forgotten who did it. You once said, I didn't get here by being serious. I got here by dressing up in frocks and mucking about. Yeah. And Sc someone called Scarra says, wants to know, I'd like to know if the humorous content of your work is a deliberate response to a sometimes over-serious art establishment. Another reader called Shay One puts it slightly differently. And their question goes as follows. Compared to Grace and Perry, most of the young British artists of the 90s were and are humorless, self-important, pretentious bores. Discuss. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. That, I mean, I know quite a few of them, and they're not. They're very funny, a lot of them. And, and you know, so I wouldn't say that's a, that's a very terrible, sweeping, bitter generalisation. Probably a failed artist. But, <laughs> but um, humour, you know, I'm English. And the defining characteristic of an English person is that you're in a permanent state of social dis-ease. Of course, one of our, you know, so therefore we use humour as our main weapon against that. You know, if it eases the situation. And so I'm a typical English person. And so I, you know, and I'm a, I'm a very English artist, I think. And so I use humour a lot. It's part of life. You know, it, people are very funny, you know, in, a, in our discourse, in our general lives, we go to the shop or whatever at work, we make jokes all the time. And so I'm just like anybody else. But I, I suppose I do do it in public and I... And I enjoy it. It's hilarious, you know. <laughs> and I think it's what's also a thing, you know. I think that you can deal with really dark issues if because uh, earnestness is the biggest crime that an Englishman can commit. Yeah, and right. so, therefore, I, you know, you've got to avoid that. And I think that often the most poignant things are that really horrible pit of your stomach swoop mm -hmm. from humour to tragedy. And I think that is something I respond to very, very well. And so I try to find that in my own work. Yes.
most of you will probably know that in the job of interviewing, one tends to leave the difficult question till last. <laughs> <laughs> so if they storm out in a huff, you've still got something left. This is no exception. And this one comes from Dapper Danielle, and it goes like this. There is a rumour that you are the Chancellor of the Exchequer's favourite artist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. If this is true, how will you ever live it down? <laughs> I, think it, I think it's got a kind of radical chic cool to it, actually. Actually, you know, the, but, you know because, um, uh, yeah, because the I mean, I'm, I, I'm a Labour voter. I come out now. I mean, I know that's probably more shocking to people than the fact that I'm wearing a dress. But um, uh, I have voted Labour in every election since I could. And uh, so, yeah, I'm not a supporter of uh, Mr. Osborne's uh, government. And... Um, it's kind of, you know, I can't control the government art collection. They buy the work. And I, I find it actually quite amusing, you know. And, you know, his taste in art, well, you know, well, well, how can I question it? You know, it's, it's so good. <laughs> but it is, I mean, the piece in question is that he has it in his office. That's I think. right, yeah. I believe he does, yeah. it's, it's called Print for a Politician. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, it's a kind of uh, a, a sort of study of kind of the fact that we're all in groups, really. And uh, we're all as bad as each other. I'm sure but curiously, the one thing that, the one group that isn't on that print, other conservatives. <laughs>